Hey friends, welcome to another episode of Olivia's Corner. I'm Olivia. I am a creative. I like to do cosplay, writing stories, telling stories. I'm in school for writing for film and television. If any and all of that sounds like fun, please hit that subscribe button so that you get notified when I put new content out. Welcome to the club. Let's begin. Today's idea is brought to you by procrastination. <laughs> I'm procrastinating doing my homework while making this video. And the inspiration is from things that I've procrastinated. So here we go. Today we're going to go through a couple of the paintings that I've done that are unfinished. This being one of them. And come up with a story or a location that'll be in my D&D world based off of the things that you're seeing and all of their unfinished glory. If you're concerned that my outfit doesn't match, side note, uh, my stepmom gave me this blue dress and half of the reason I love it is because it exactly matches my wig. Completely the same tone. I love it. Yeah. So that's why I'm wearing this costume right now. And also it's fun. I'm following my own advice. Follow the joy. Okay, <laughs> without further ado, location number one, this painting. Um, in case you can't tell what it is, it's a typewriter sitting on a desk. Painted this before I ever got a typewriter. And obviously I never finished it. Unless you can consider this finished, in which case. Alright. I've written plenty of... Okay, so... In... <laughs> this was intended to be a piece where there was this epic cliffside and this lonely typewriter desk for a writer to come sit at their typewriter and come up with ideas into the empty ocean. I've written plenty of locations where there are cliff sides into the world that I play in, uh, so it would be all too easy to add just like a desk where there's a typewriter, maybe even a couple of words have been typed onto some parchment. Could be fun for it to be magical and therefore like someone types a couple of letters and the writer types back even though there's not a person there and they're stuck in time or something interesting like that. So I've got some cliff sides in mind. My party typically travels by road. They don't really venture off the road very often. Not that I give them a reason to, but yeah. I think I will put a magical typewriter sort of location on some cliffs. Watch out, party. <laughs> Any of them that watch this are just going to ask me if there's a typewriter anytime they go to the cliffs now. I look forward to it. Painting number one, the typewriter on the cliffs. Painting number two, the most unfinished out of all of them. You can't even tell what it is. If you look real close, there's some sky painted in the background here. There are some ruins and rocks and sorts of things in here. And on this side, these are also supposed to be like ruined pieces of some sort of ancient building. And then this is like a tower, a ruined tower in the background where there's this like window in the tower. I don't know. It's not finished, so you can't tell what it is. And then there's some like poor perspective carpet armchair bookshelf. Does not go with the rest of that, and I kind of love it. I think this is the kind of location that you find in empty plains. Maybe there could have been some mountains in the background, but I did not put them in there. I almost imagine some sort of wizard or wandering soul just built a location out here and it's like where they read their books or I get like time traveler vibes out of this just like if I could travel through time I would set up strategic locations that were good for sitting down to read a good book that I found in sorts of things I don't know what do you think what kind of vibes is this giving you also time traveler because like the armchair I don't know if that makes sense in medieval settings. I've never seen a medieval setting where there was like a cushiony armchair. I feel like it's impractical. Why would they put fabric on a chair like that? I don't know. So that's the time traveler's getaway. That's what we'll call painting number two. Painting number three is problematic, but not on purpose. I didn't paint it trying to be problematic. Okay, this is as far as I got. I was very proud of my mixtures of browns for the bark, but if there, if, like, this would only make sense if there was some sort of glowing light source in the very foreground. Does that make sense? 
like for the trees to be that bright. I painted no ground, no shadows. Uh, it kind of just stops in the back. The trees kind of line up in a, a way that's not artistically helpful. For your sake, this was intended to be a lake and a body floating in the water and a guitar. I don't know if they are dead or alive. I kind of imagined this person was floating dead, just a corpse in the water. I don't know why. It's kind of tragic. I think the reason I stopped painting this is that my inner voices were like, Olivia, that's really dark. And I went, oh, you're right, I can't paint that. I don't know why. That's dark equals I can't do it, but... A lake in a little forest is totally doable in a D&D setting. I like that the trees kind of look dead. Could just be a part of the forest that's dead. Maybe there's something wrong with the water. Who is this person? Why do they have a guitar? Why are they floating in the water? Are they alive? Are they dead? Who knows? This painting is going to be called... Pond in a Forest. I don't know. <laughs> you tell me, what should it be called? Painting number four is the most finished with the most variants of color. I think. The most of it is colored. That's all I mean. I don't know that I would consider the parts that are painted finished. Here we are. This one's been hanging in my bedroom for a while. Um, it's supposed to be like a bathhouse. Problems I find are that the pillars just kind of end. That is not strategic for a painting. Um, and I never painted the person. It was just a person on the edge of the water. I intended it to be a woman. You really can't tell from here. If I were to run with a story for this, just based on what you see here, she would be a ghost that haunts the bathhouse or something of that equivalent. I don't know why she would need a beautiful red cloak and like this bag that goes over her shoulder. It's supposed to be a bag. You really can't tell. Yeah, I love the variant like variations in the red cloak that I did there. You kind of see it? it kind of looks like it really is ripply, kind of standing up there. Haunted bathhouse? Very easy to do in a D&D setting. I could totally do that. It's a thing I could do. Painting number four, lovingly called... The Bathhouse Ghost. That's probably my best title so far. Okay, that's all of my uh, unfinished paintings in that series. I used oil paint in these paintings. One of the reasons that they are unfinished is that uh, to do a good job with oil paint, you need to be very careful to not get any of the chemicals on your skin, and there is a lot of setup and a lot of teardown to do a good job being careful with all of that. Learned about it in art school, it always took five minutes to get set up. Doesn't seem like a long time, but if you're not sure that you're gonna paint for more than like 10 minutes, don't know that it's worth it. Mixing the colors takes a long time, anyway. What do you think? What kind of stories could come out of these images? I am happy to hear your feedback and suggestions and ideas. And if you're one of my players and you want to add one of these locations into something in your backstory, please do. It's fun. Should I finish my paintings? What do you think? I know it's time consuming, but it might be worth it if I just pick some time and do it. Thank you for showing up today. I hope that you enjoyed my little montage through procrastination. I am going to unfortunately go start my homework now. Thank you for showing up. I appreciate you being here, and I will see you next week. Okay, bye.